cannibalism, veganism, and Satanism. All three of these things are interconnected by one idea, which is the idea of consent. And we're going to go through this in effectively reverse order because we gotta build some context. But you may have noticed, there's been a lot of talk about cannibalism as of recent. Yet another great instance of scientists doing things because they can, despite the obvious negative ramifications of said things. Now they figured out how to harvest human cells and then grow human meat in these little petri dish things by feeding them expired blood donations. I know, sounds very appetizing. Now, if for some reason you had some sort of bigoted gut revulsion to this, hopefully I can quench that disgust by informing you that this, the Ouroboros Steak Grow Your Own Human Meat Kit is technically not cannibalism. Now, if you were to ask me, I would say that when it comes to cannibalism, I'm not gonna be satisfied with the technicality. Now, of course, with all modern horrors, they tend to get progressively worse over time, and I don't imagine that this would be an exception considering they've somehow managed to incorporate celebrity cult worship into this soft cannibalism, this not cannibalism by technicality, if you will, introducing Eat Celebrity Meat, Bite Labs, grows meat from celebrity tissue samples and then uses it to make artisan, artisanal, art, artisan, artisan, they make salami. I don't understand why they would think that the cell samples coming from celebrities is supposed to make this more appealing. It's not as if regular meat doesn't already have enough plastic in it. Help get celebrities on board. Let's tell the world we want to hashtag Eat celebrity meat. Yo, dude, you tried the Lizzo bacon yet? Yeah, bro. We made bacon out of Lizzo's liposuction. You want some? You know, in 1931, Winston Churchill made the prediction that in the future, all of the world's meat would be grown in a lab. Someone needs to tell scientists that these dystopian predictions are not an invitation. It's not like, huh, you know, I think that when we develop AI, the first thing it's gonna try to do is kill all of us. And then the scientists say, Okay, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. No, that's not the point. But the question is, how exactly are people passing this literal cannibalism or, you know, this, this soft cannibalism because, you know, it's grown in a lab for now. How exactly do they see this as morally permissible? Well, you know, thank you for asking. The secret is veganism. See, what veganism has done is created this idea that a type of consumption is either moral or immoral entirely based upon consent. Let me explain. So we take two types of food production. Traditional animal husbandry humans have been practicing for literally ever. Naturally grazing cattle, which is in balance with nature as you can get. And then modern GMO pesticide fueled monocrop farming. One keeps all ecosystems intact and leaves nature essentially undisturbed. The other destroys entire ecosystems and forests. Which one is moral, says veganism? The latter. Why? Because of consent. Animals cannot consent to being eaten. Therefore, no matter what, it is immoral to eat them. But, technically speaking, humans can talk. Humans can consent. Humans could consent to being eaten, which would, by the consent-based moral framework established by veganism, make cannibalism vegan. As crazy as that sounds, it is already being discussed. And this promotion of soft cannibalism has just started. It is going to get worse. And keep in mind, just because you have an obvious moral aversion to this disgusting nonsense doesn't mean that everyone else will too. Most people cannot think for themselves and they can be easily hamstrung. That's a word, right? They can be easily hamstrung into agreeing with something like this and full cannibalism. The groundwork has already been set. The cards are in hand. They are just waiting for their turn. I'm serious. Look, all they need to do is combine two already established narratives. Narrative one, the world is overpopulated. Narrative two, there is extreme food scarcity and we are incapable of feeding everyone. Do you see where I'm going with this? You have two narratives. There's too many people and there's not enough food. What's the solution that the bug man might come up with? That solves both of them. Cannibalism, 
I can almost see the CNN headlines now. Is human flesh a more sustainable food source? Cannibalism by consent. How to better honor your lost loved ones by giving their bodies to solve world hunger. Oh, guess what? Organ donor cards now include the donation of your consumable flesh. How great. This is insane. Yes, but I promise that the bug man can be pushed around like it's nothing. All you gotta do is this pretty standard leftist debate tactic actually, where you can get someone to verbally agree with something that they fundamentally disagree with by pretty much posing that it would be logically consistent if they did. So you agree with this argument that says this, and you agree with this argument that says this. So logically, you agree with this one, right? So you agree that there's too many people. Yes, says the bug man. You agree that there's not enough food. Yes, says the bug man. So you must agree that we need to start eating people. And hey, don't worry, it's not real people. It's grown in a Petri dish, for now. Now this line of thinking is very deceptive and morally void, yes, but it is very linear and it would run on a computer like a math problem. People are hungry, there are too many people, eat the people. And if we start letting AI make our decisions like some people want, that might literally be what happens. Again, once those two narratives are accepted, which they already have been, it's in the cards. But we gotta backtrack for a second here. Where exactly does this consent-based morality come from? This idea that the sole determining factor that something is permissible, like the consumption of an animal, or maybe even a person, is whether or not said individual consents. Well, this idea, of course, comes from Satanism. The key tenets of Satanism essentially just sum up to the will of the individual is the only thing that matters. Anything and everything is permissible as long as all parties consent. In Satanism, there is no greater higher authority or law establishing what is good and what is bad. There is only consent. If you consent, it is good. This is the same moral framework that makes cannibalism vegan. There is no right and wrong, there is just consent. This is the same group of people that want to drastically lower the age of consent. Because if a party can consent, whatever is done to them is permissible. Disgusting, I know. And if you were to somehow get into an argument with one of these Satanist Luciferian types and you make an appeal to a higher moral authority, the usual retort would be something like, oh, what's wrong with you? Are you so stupid that you can't figure out what's good and bad by yourself? You need some bearded sky daddy to tell you? Yes, yes I do because consent-based morality is retarded. And I don't say that lightly. Obviously, if your moral framework manages to give the A-OK -okay on cannibalism, abortion, and all the other degenerate nonsense, that is retarded. The idea of consent will be weaponized against you. How many great evils are acted upon people based on their written legal consent? Oh, you signed your name to this, agreeing to it, not fully understanding it, now we get to take advantage of you. Oh, it's unfair that you can't declare bankruptcy on all this debt, now you're a debt sir for the rest of your life? Oh, well, too bad. You signed. You consented. Oh, you want out of this record deal because now we have full ownership of everything you make and you make a penny every time we make a dollar? Too bad. You signed. You consented. They will steal from you. They will manipulate you. They will enslave you all based upon your written legal consent. Know this. With all the evils of the modern world, including the inevitable mark, they will not force it upon you. That's not how this works. They will ask for your consent. They will ask for you to do it voluntarily. And as we've seen, as long as you consent, no matter what, they think that anything they do to you is permissible because you consented. They ask for your consent before they inject you with the cope shot. They ask for your consent to spy on you, to collect information on you. You are the only one that can sign your name on the paperwork to give your consent for them to victimize you. There is a reason that the trope is doing a deal with the devil and not getting your soul finessed by the devil. He doesn't take it from you, he doesn't steal it. You make a contract, you sign it off. Remember this, be careful what you agree to.